Today, we are chatting with Leanne Lurie. She's a clinical psychologist. A big thank you to SADAC. I need you to go to their website. There's a number. It will also be in our description for this podcast on social media, as well as on our website, babybrunch.co.za. Depression is taking the lives of women, parents, our children. Yet, when I tell my birth story and I say to someone, I was sad and I was, and they say, do you think you had postnatal depression? I go, no. I don't think so. It was never diagnosed. I don't know. Why, why does it still carry a stigma? Why, why are we still shy to talk about how sad or depressed we are? A new parent is expected to have it all together. A new parent is expected to be happy and excited about the birth of this miracle like, into the world. There's no room to be upset. There's no room to be down. And if you admit that you are and you admit that you are not coping, your fear is that you are going to be judged or that you are going to be viewed as less than the perfect mother or caregiver. And the concept of a perfect parent certainly doesn't exist. And I think that the more we can open up conversations like this, the more we can hearten parents' awareness of both their own vulnerability and in turn give them the capacity to be there for their children when they are equally vulnerable. What's the difference between postnatal and postpartum? So they, they do refer to the same thing. It refers to the period after birth. But what we don't talk about is your peripartum depression. You know, when a woman falls pregnant, when she is growing this miracle inside of her, she's expected to be filled with all the joys and, and that pregnancy glow. What no one talks about, though, is the huge anxiety and, and mood changes that may then accompany that, a pregnancy and in turn affect the woman's ability to actually function properly. And I think very often, because it's not spoken about, women don't seek help. And if left untreated, there's a very, very strong likelihood that she's going to experience postpartum depression as well, which in turn will then also affect her ability to form a bond and an attachment with her baby, but through no fault of her own. How does one identify it? Like, how do you know it's not just a sadness? How do you know that you are depressed and that you need to call someone? So we know that like in the postpartum period, we know that sort of by day three, when your hormones are starting to fluctuate and change, it's very normal to experience the baby blues. But when that sadness starts to impact on your functioning, on your ability to get up in the morning, have some kind of self-care, on your ability to, for example, relate to your partner, and when it starts to persist for longer than a two-week period, and it impacts your thoughts, you're feeling hopeless, you're feeling worthless, you may even have some ambivalent feelings towards your baby, you may, for example, not want to be left alone with your baby. Those are warning signs. And at that point, you may not necessarily have the insight to recognize that you are in trouble. And so it's important that your partner is equally equipped to pick up on those warning signs and to seek help for you when needed. What does postpartum depression look like in men? It's an excellent question and it's very often not spoken about. I think that for, for a new father, I think it can be incredibly scary and incredibly overwhelming. You know, my husband and I also, we were talking the other day and he said one of the scariest things he's ever been through is, you know, is watching our children being born. I just got goosebumps. Oof. And it's, and it's not something that he'd ever like spoken about before. Right. Because I think suddenly for them, they're also faced with a, with a huge sense of responsibility and care. And for many, they may also put that stereotypical, you know, financial pressure on themselves that they have to be the one who provides. They have to be the, be the one that is strong and holds their partner up. And very often that was a lapse into a period of depression. So how, how do we find help? Is, do you have self-help tips to deal with, with panic disorder or with, with just feeling of helplessness? 
where does one start? So, firstly, I think, look, SEDAC does a phenomenal job. And I think they have a huge, re like, resource base that you can tap into if you're needing, you know, advice on different avenues to follow. But for me, the departure point is always self-compassion. And so how do you pause on a daily basis? Even if it's something as simple as when you come home, take your shoes off, take your socks off, walk on the grass, feel, feel the cold like beneath your feet. Can you hear the traffic? You know, do you have a warm cup of tea in your hands? Engage your senses. Yes, it's not going to change what you're dealing with, but it increases your capacity to just carry your distress in a more meaningful way. I think that for us, I think we also, we, we're part of a society where everything's about quick fix, quick solutions, squash what you're feeling down. And this is asking you to do something different. It may even feel counterintuitive. Carry your distress. You don't have to decide what you're going to do with it now. And sometimes the most meaningful thing you can do is to actually just sit with it and to just give yourself permission to be. You know, there's a, there's a lovely saying which says, you know, this too shall pass. And it refers both to the good stuff and to the more difficult stuff. And even if you give yourself permission to, to take five minutes with your children and to experience their lightness and their laughter and, and, and to be in that moment, and when the moment passes, you have full permission to go back to worrying about what's ailing you. But you can both live and experience what you're feeling simultaneously. Please follow Baby Branch and find the details of SEDEC in our post right now. This podcast is dedicated to every parent and to every child. You deserve the best. You really do. A big thank you to SEDEC, also to Leanne Lurie. She's a clinical psychologist, but most importantly, she helps people. Thanks for your time. Thank you for having me.